to join us today and uh, and tomorrow for APSI's Highways, Street Lighting and Winter Maintenance Seminar 2020. I'm Rob Bailey, Principal Advisor for Highways here at APSI, and I'll be, I'll be comparing the event for, for the two days. Overall, highways spending in the UK uh, is up, uh, but the local government element of that, the element of local roads, remains fairly static at best. But if adjusted for inflation, then significantly down. I think climate emergency and COVID recovery are going to be intertwined uh, in, in, in many ways. And it's important to be part of the discussion and the debate round about that. I often trot out the statistic that 98% of all roads start and end on the local highway network. So from the government's point of view and no doubt local authorities' point of view, the the ambition is to have a safe, reliable network, one that is safe for pedestrians, one that is safe for vehicle drivers, one that is safe for uh, cyclists, and also a network that encourages people to use the roads. From the highway sector, the way that I view this is that in the words of Job at 121, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Or perhaps in the case of every local highways authority faced with the inevitable pressures on all of their local services and thinking about highways, the DFT giveth and the Ministry of Housing, Communities and local government take it away. Obviously, sitting in the back of all of this is the good news that local government funding is to be increased by 4.4%. But we still have to remember that that's, that leaves us still 51% down since austerity began. And we've had an awful lot of rainy days that have depleted the scarce resources that we've got. Cost reductions, greater spend on the delivery of services. And that really, you know, for us in the public sector, we are there. We're, we're looking at how we can maximise the spend on the ground for our residents, councillors, road users. So through making savings and harnessing um, what we've achieved through lockdown, through COVID, let's, you know, turn that into real cashable savings and invest it further onto the ground. There are lots of issues, but let's not be negative. This is going to happen. The 5G companies and others are going to want to use lighting columns and the like to host their equipment. So why not embrace this change? We should welcome these opportunities. They are opportunities for improving local government services, potentially for um, uh, encouraging income. So this graph shows how work, working in Dorset, how the switch in the resins had made a difference. The red line shows the carbon footprint of the resin. We show there was a switch. It's actually the, the switch actually took place in 2019, but the the graphics wouldn't quite work for me. So you can see the carbon footprint shooting down. Whilst over the three years, the turnover of works that we carried out on the contract had risen. And what we do as an industry is, is small, but it's, it is it is significant. And these, this from just these sort of minor switches shows what can be achieved. Salt, when it's in its solid form and is underground, has the same tensile strength as concrete. So it's essentially like leaving concrete pillars underground. So you end up with a, a giant lattice effect. Um, supporting the roof and we're on two horizons which we'll come to in a minute here's the machine in operation we can operate across three shifts at the moment um, and produce 24 hours if we want to and that gives us the the flexibility we can mine between uh, as low as 400,000 tons up to over a million tons a year if we want to um, it understand pretty weather driven uh, the last two winters have been quite mild so we've not had the need to produce vast quantities, um, but the ability is there to ramp up the production if we need to. And then just general visibility, progress. The stakeholders want to know where you are in their ward, how many are working, how many are blocked, what's the status, how are you progressing? So being able to demonstrate that, self-serve that, without people having to produce reports or that, that, that were timely and, and took a lot of operational effort. I that. Being able to interact, seeing them as uh, numbers or as pie charts and being able to click on sections, visualise them, see them on the map. Again, all possible 
because it's asset held. It's all living in the asset history. So being able to interact with these graphs becomes more realistic. And that's what you need to do with data. That makes it believable. You want to touch and feel and visualize data. Or adding a line to a road, you can reduce casualty casualties by up to 25% for low cost. By cross-hatching and rumble strips, to use the same terminology, the same effect for the same low cost. As we go further down, that's runoff crashes, junction crashes, head-on crashes, the message is the same. Very little cost, we don't need to redesign junctions, for very little cost, we can make a significant reduction in casualties by putting lines on the road. And that's the simple, simple message that I would ask you to take away with you from that today. So this is a video of the uh, <clears throat> drone landing on the lab post uh, by itself uh, using an IR uh, tag that's on the lamp post. One of the recommendations uh, that we came up with uh, after doing a few of these tests is, um, or in terms of a feedback, is to have the infrastructure itself uh, robot friendly. So for the new infrastructure, uh, they can have little uh, add-ons that would make life easier for a robot. Uh, next, please. That would make life easier for the robot uh, to uh, deal with them. So in this case, uh, we are able to land on the lamppost, but if the lamppost already had a tag on it, it makes it easier for the robot to find it and land on it. Uh, and also if the lantern was designed in such a way that's easily uh, removable. So rather than trying to do what humans do uh, in removing the um, the cover and changing the, the light bulb, uh, we can take the whole lantern off and uh, replace it with a new one. Uh, this video is showing the installation of a sensor, but in the same way we can, uh, we can do it uh, by changing the whole lantern. So all that remains for me to do is to say a huge thank you to all our speakers today and yesterday to you, the delegates, to our exhibitors, our guests and um, to our sponsor WJ Group. So thank you for all attending. Stay safe and see you again very soon.